kind of desk is this? It's a European company. It's called Buso Audio. Buso, Buso okay. Audio, B-U-S-O. This one is called uh, Producer XL. You got racks on both sides, and then the bottoms are racks as well. And then that tray is an 88 key tray. And then you can either set up the speakers on the top racks here, mm -hmm. or you can set it up back, kind of measure it both, and this one was a better spot. They're the same company that makes the speaker stands as well from Buso Audio. Highly recommend them. Their stuff are absolutely incredible, really good quality, and uh, they look really good. That's a big screen in the back. Holy cow. It's a ultra-wide 49-inch. It's actually a gaming monitor. Yeah. <laughs> they use it for gaming because yeah. it's a curved 49-inch. Uh, but it works so well with like editing files, MIDI, uh, Pro Tools, all that kind of stuff because I got a very big screen which makes just my workflow so much faster. Using the new uh, Mac Studio, yep. so it's the maxed out one Sick. Uh, from the Mac Studio. I used to actually have the Mac Pro, the cheese grater one. Yeah. And I tested both. The new Mac Pro? Yes. Oh man. I sold the Mac Pro, got that one because this one is way faster yeah. or less than half the price. So nice. for studio workers, this is the way to go, man. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely the way to go. And you're on the uh, Stream Deck life. I know everyone. Yeah, I like the Stream Deck for just a few shortcuts here and there. I haven't fully tapped in all the features, but I started working with Soundflow. And then, because there's now those special customization for Soundflow and shortcuts into Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. And then an integration with Soundflow into Stream Deck. So, uh, and you can write your own code. So I started doing this, but I haven't written enough codes to actually fully integrate uh, Stream Deck yet. Yeah. But I have it just for, for apps and specific features and stuff like that until I get Soundflow fully integrated into it. And then I will be writing full action uh, or flow of workflow inside it. So I got to point out this Grace M908. It's, a, yes. it's such a beautiful monitor controller. And my favorite part is that you just have the one remote clip going in here, and then that's just your headphones. The thing about this that was my favorite is the converters on this is master grade converter. Oh, okay. Because it has digital to analog converters. Yeah. Um, and then you it has eight of them. Yep. So you can send multiple mixes or masters to all of them, and then you can AB from here instead of ABing from the software. So that's what I do right here. I would go like, to here and then just a being all mixes and masters yeah and it actually carries clock in it as well yeah and you said that has um dsp in it for eqing it's 24 or 26 uh band eq for your speakers mm -hmm. so that way for final room tuning and it supports 22 channels of speakers so if you're running a full Dolby Atmos setup, you can actually run the whole thing from here. Uh, delay compensation for speakers, DSP EQ, uh, left and right balance, surround balance, the whole thing. You can run it entirely from here and make sure it's all well done. That's crazy. So you don't have to like come out of like the links or your, your DAW for No, that. you send it, actually you send a digital audio if you want to. You can send it ADAT and then it will convert all of it with mastering grade converters. To 24 channels to so all your speakers and then you can run and from here like you can see you switch so it's like a 5.1 system it's a full bigger system and, then you, and you can uh, set up in the settings anything that you want to be and it can also send cue outs for your tracking room if you want to as well the amount of features in this thing is absolutely amazing it's it's very expensive it's like what four grand or something eight Eight grand, good yes. God. <laughs> or 7,700, something like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the stereo one I think is like four. Four grand, yes. Four grand. The stereo one is a four grand, but it doesn't have the DSP in it. Right, or but the Atmos. <laughs> or the Atmos, yeah. but it still have the same converters. So yeah. if you're not doing Atmos and you don't need DSP, it's obviously amazing to use. It's a very expensive one, but it, it's kind of become the heart of the studio and you kind of, oh, when oh you, my God, when you yes. get to this, you kind of have to have it. Can you tell me a little bit about what you got in the racks over here? I'm using the new, actually the Wes, Wes Audio Titan. I've been using some of their stuff and they're incredible. So this is their Pultec EQ version. And then this is their version of the SSLG bus compressor. What I like about the Wes Audio that they hook up USB to your computer and they have a plugin. Oh, wow. And then in the plugin, you change the settings. It's actually syncs. What? So it's a digitally controlled analog unit. Whoa. And then when you open a session, if the plugin is in the session, it recalls the setting of whatever you had this for that session. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, that's uh, great. But it's fully analog because you have to pass audio in and out through it. Sure. Uh, and if you're using their chassis, you basically use one USB on the back and it automatically recognizes all 10 channels. What? Even if you're not using West Audio? Well, it won't recall these settings, but sure, it yeah. recognizes that on number seven and six and se uh, five and six, seven and eight are West Audio units and it automatically syncs to them. Sure, got it. They have a new um, tube compressors, which is their version of the Manly. Nice. Uh, that's what I'm looking to buy eventually because I really like it. The Verimu? Yeah, yeah. That's, so their version of the Verimu. Um, that's with cool. real tubes in yeah. 500 series. Those are the Neves um, Those are tape saturations. Oh, sick. So, so the magnetic tapes, and they're incredible on vocals. And it, they have also the silk um, transformers in them. Yeah. Um, so you get kind of both worlds. You get a tape saturation, and then you get the silk transformers. Absolutely amazing. And then SSL Fusion, everybody knows that. You have a drive. You have, that's the, it's called the, Violet EQ, which is like the SSL version of the Poltec. Yeah, smiley so face. Low shelf and high shelf. Yeah. Yeah, the smiley face. And then that's a high frequency compressor, which is like a de-esser. And then a stereo imager. And then SSL transformer. And then just input and output. So you can use it in mix buses mm -hmm. a lot. I use it in mix buses a lot. Sometimes I use it in mastering too, or specific elements of it in mastering. And then it's great for like overheads. Oh, yes, cool. Yeah, it, of course. Or electric guitars, stereo guitars through it as I'm tracking. Sure. And it's it's amazing. The links, everybody knows that. I use this basically to pass audio in and out for AD and DA conversion to make sure that all my quality is really clean. And then above it is the 2500 compressors. This is the newer version, so it's just the 2500 plus. The only difference in that one is it has a blend feature in it where you can run parallel compression or oh, have yeah. a mix button in Killer. it. Killer. Uh, it's like the famous API. Everybody knows that. It's incredible. The, this one is the, it's actually made by, it's called Langvin, but it's made by Manly. And it's a, an analog limiter. And it's a, it's a great stereo limiter. These are the mastering as well. A great unit. Then above it, this is a, not super new. It's a couple years, but not a lot of people familiar with it. But Flock Audio. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you the ran patch into those, the patch bays. Yep. So it's a digitally controlled analog patch bay. Uh, where it has an app in here. So I have all my hardware assigned on the left side and I can basically grab, for example, my, um, there's my Hilo outs, my links, and then I can put here like my APIs. Nice. And then now I'm just deciding what my chain is and then I'm sending my API into my SSL and then I'm sending it back for conversion into my Hilo. But the cool Whoa. thing is I can just bypass while I'm listening Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Or I can split the signal and then run a second parallel version of the signal that is unprocessed. I use that in tracking a lot. I would track vocals Yeah. and I would track a process signal and I track a raw version and then use that for parallel compression uh, in, in engineering or for snare drum. So instead of using it like a plugin for parallel compression, sure, I would yeah. smash one with a compressor. Yeah through the API and then I'll track a, a, a one that is completely untouched and then run both in mixing, but in real analog units. It has allowed me to use all my analog gear mm -hmm. its fullest potential basically, because I use them now in mixing, I use them um, in tracking. So I mix hybrid now. Yeah. So I run all my stuff as inserts mm -hmm. and then I run them in here and I can bypass and listen. And then you can save a preset. That's great. In here of your mixing session and then recall all the routing for that preset. It's a really cool unit. Uh, it's 32 in, 32 out. And they have smaller one and they have now just released a massive beast one for like 10 grand. Yeah, I, I saw like that 96 one. one. Yeah. 96 in, 96 out for bigger studios. <clears throat> yeah, that's a great one. Then over here, this is the uh, Profit Sequential analog. Incredible analog synth. Love that unit, use it a lot. Just run a MIDI to it and then just use one of my MIDI controllers to get the sounds out of it. This is like the mainly Voxbox version. Oh. But the Focusrite. Yeah. So you have like an EQ and a DSer and uh, a compression and uh, shelving EQ and a, a full compressor in. And then it has also conversion for, you can run it as a digital input instead of analog input. So it's a full vocal processing chain if you want to. And then 
Core 710 from UA. I mean, it's very standard. Everybody used that. It's an incredible unit. These are my favorite. Actually, I use that the most. The Chandlers? The Chandlers. This is the old LTD one. Oh, sick. They don't make those anymore. So this is has the original Neve 1073 circuits in yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, The yeah. original ones with the EQ. Um, and that, that thing, I think it's my favorite preamp. And then uh, this is just the Focusrite Pre. It's the ISA A28, so it's an A-channel pre. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of adds more to my pre's. And then I'm running, the whole studio runs out of UA. So all like the heart of the, my interface is UA. Uh -huh. So I use an X8P, okay. an X6, and an X4. Nice. Right here. So they're all chained Thunderbolt 3. Yep. Um, and then all of these are connected with either ADAT or connected um, just analog. And then I had a buddy of mine who helped me wiring, his name is Ben. We wired like custom made uh, panels for front inputs. Mm -hmm. So that way if I have like a singer in here and we really quick want to tap into one of these and test which mic we want to use, which preamp we want to use. So just front inputs to all of these really quick in and out, yeah. be able to access all of uh, these units super quick. And then we also did like MIDI and USB and ethernet. That way we can also tap into those really quick for tracking keyboards or MIDI or stuff like that. That's awesome. It's amazing you made it off in one rack. Yeah, That's it's cool. uh, from Redco. Yeah, yeah. And then so we custom made the rack from Redco and then he did all the wiring and the soldering from the back and all that kind of stuff. Moog Sub 37. Those uh, are so fun. Yeah, it's like standard obviously uh, for synth bass. So I run this into the patch bay. Okay. And then I get to choose what I want. Sure, yeah. And then it's it can be different. So that's kind of the beautiful part of that patch bay. Mm -hmm. Is it's so and it's so easy. It takes like a few seconds for you to choose. I want to run it into this or this or this or this. Because yeah. all of those pre's are hooked up line ins and line yeah. outs through the patch bay. So I can it. run this straight through the that. And the patch bay has front inputs as well. So I can just go line inputs on the Sweet. front, super quick. And then I can just run it into anything I want, or can stack them as well. Yeah. So I can, you can like stack some pre's and get a color from that one and stack into a second pre and get a second color from it for like more distortion or clipping if you want to do that on purpose. Got a couple of the worms. I was actually impressed with them. It's, um, it's definitely way better than the plugins. Yeah. Uh, and it's definitely way cheaper than the actual LA-2A. Sure. Uh, but they were, they were great. They used them on vocals mostly. Uh, a couple of verbs, two of the lexicon verbs down here. And then also passing through the patch bay, uh -huh. both of them. So for the same thing, uh, being able to run uh, some of these verbs and then being able to use them as well. And then summing. This, analog summing for mixing, it's a must. Yeah. And it's magical That's using the dangerous awesome. audio. Uh, I know there's a lot of plugins that do it and I A-B'd both and yeah. it's not the same. Yeah. Like the NLS uses it, and then Slate has the same ones. Yeah. And I tried, and even Pro Tools have the heat, which yeah. is pretty cool, and I use it sometimes. But when I AB with this, yeah, it's game just it does, it's a game changer. It does something so different. This is the older one that they have. They have newer ones now that has actually you can change the color on it. Oh wow. Uh, this one, there's nothing you do. This yeah. is just volume. Yeah. And then it's just 16 channels, and that's it. This is inherited from family. <laughs> These are good, good it's a, pianos, yeah, it's man. A they really sound good nice. old ones. My main one that I use is this one. Uh huh. It's actually the Studio Logic, the SSL Grand. It's their newer ones that uh -huh. they just released a couple years ago, um, because they're actual wood. The oh these yeah, the are keys. real. They're real. Yeah, yeah, that feels great. Ivory. How do you like these speakers? And how long have you had them? I've had them for a couple years now. I went from Dyna Audio mm -hmm. to those. They are absolutely amazing. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're, it's a game changer. But I gotta say, one of the things that, uh, about those speakers, they exposed my room. When I got these speakers, it wasn't here. It was in my previous studio. Mm -hmm. When I got them, I had to spend probably like a couple grand treating my room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, because the subs on those speakers are unforgiving. <laughs> if, you, if you don't have good low treatments in this room, yeah. it won't. But um, they're very um, clean. They're clear. I mean, they will tell you everything you want to know about your mixes and masters. And then that, this is the version two, which all, all of the speakers have that feature now, the meme technology, yeah. mm -hmm. with uh, just simulating the hi-fi, flat, old school, which is the NS10. 
in the cubes, which is the Aventone cube speakers. Uh, so you kind of get four sets of speakers by buying one. Yeah. So I actually used to have two more sets of speakers and I ended up selling all of them because I just kind of didn't need them anymore. Sure, yeah. And this became the main one that I used uh, and it's been amazing.